Hello there, it's Sandy Allnock, and today I'm going to be doing part two of drawing cherry blossoms. You may have missed out on the reason for Cherry Blossom Week. This was Monday's video, so if you want to learn how to draw that branch, then go see Monday's video. But this poor sad tree that got cut down was a reason I'm doing Cherry Blossom Week. I posted that picture on Facebook and asked if my neighbors knew what happened to it, and one of my neighbors said it fell down in a storm, so she called it in. So the sad tree that I used to take pictures of all the time because I walk by that all the time with my dog is now gone. So I decided to do an ode to the tree. And I took a bunch of the flower pictures that I have taken of this tree and cobbled it together to make a pencil drawing of a whole branch full of flowers. I tend to take pictures of like looking at a beautiful branch and then there's always one flower that decides to rebel. It's like that kid that doesn't like to smile in the pictures. So I cobbled together my own picture of the, the flowers themselves and made that up myself. I added a sheet of frisket film over it and I'm using an X-Acto blade to cut around it so that I can mask these flowers out. I wanna do the background first because I'm gonna airbrush the background. When I look up at the tree and I'm taking pictures of it. I love looking up to the sky through all the branches and seeing the whole thing from that view and then getting a few of the flowers in the front. That's just one of my favorite pictures to take. So I thought I would try to replicate that, which meant masking out all the flowers. I am completely unreliable when it comes to airbrush though. So I decided to do the airbrushing first because a lot of times it just keeps getting darker and darker and darker. And then I have to adjust and I have to fix something. So you'll see it, it is going to get a little bit on the dark side, darker than I had originally intended, but that is going to help me decide how dark my flowers need to be. Because if I started out with really pale flowers and then jumped in with a dark background, I'd have to go back through the flowers and do them all over again and add more color to them. So this seemed like the better part of valor. And it's always fun to just peel off all of that brisket film and watch the whole thing revealed. So we'll stay tuned for that reveal moment very shortly. So I used some blue for the sky. I added a bunch of different pinks. And when you're looking up at something like that, it's almost a bokeh look that you can get, but it's not completely bokeh. It's not all the little dots and circles, but it's blobs of color. So I layered a couple different pinks together. I uh, layered some, um, some blues in there, changed the blue color and made it a little stronger. When you do airbrush, you're going to be picking colors that are darker than what you originally would think. Like if you're considering a color that you would use if you were applying the color with the brush nib and you were drawing with it, think darker. Just think about more color. So here's one where I, yeah, I went a little bit overly dark and then I had to go back in and add more pink to it so I'd have more of the um, other pink colors with it. I also added a blue green to it because I wanted some depth and richness now that I had all this color anyway. I kind of liked it when it was done. It, it worked. So now for the reveal, peeling off all these little pieces is the best part of doing any kind of masking. It just looks like magic. And I also took off the tape from the outside since I wasn't going to need to do any more airbrushing. I wanted that nice crisp edge while I was working. But if you're planning on maybe going back and doing more airbrushing, you want to leave that on. And then we color the flowers. And I'm going to speed color through these. If you saw my tiny tutorial that got posted yesterday, then you'll know that there's different directions your flowers can go. And throughout all of this, I was playing with the different directions the flowers were facing. Now, the tutorial showed how to shape the flowers, how to put the center in a different place in order to get a different angle to the flower. But you also will need to think about when you're doing color added to them, where is the light going to hit? If it's curled, the, the leaf itself or the petal itself is curled away from the sun, you're going to have some shadow on it. 
If it's curled toward the sun, it's going to have light on it. But in a picture like this, when you have a whole different bunch of flowers, you also need to consider the negative coloring, meaning a, a flower petal that's underneath of another flower petal. In reality, you might see them in, in a picture or by looking at a flower and see that they're the same color. But when you're drawing them, you may need to emphasize the difference between them. And I did a lot of that in here because I was trying to make sure I had definition in the flowers, not with a line around them, but with enough color that you could tell where one flower petal stopped and the other began behind it. Once I started adding the branch in there, it started really taking shape because I had something large with mass and with rich dark color. So doing that early on so I could establish what does that dark color look like? How dark is that going to get? And those dark centers in the middle of the flowers as well. That was really helpful to start developing the whole thing in some kind of unified way. The darkest color that I used here was actually an RV69 because I was going to be using that for some of the dark areas of the flowers. So those little dark dot thingies, whatever they're called on the flowers. <laughs> I know I keep saying I should look that up before I start doing voiceovers, but those little dark doobobs are all in RV69. And there's also some RV99 going to be in here as well. And when I used those, I decided to pull some of that red color into the branch itself. Throughout this whole process, I was also finding out things about the pinks. And not that I didn't know them before. I kind of had in my head that there are warm and cool pinks in the Copic system. But there were some places where it became really obvious that there were warms and cools. And I was trying to figure out how to make everything go cool. And sometimes by emphasizing the warmth, like that flower in the back has a lot more of the warm pink in it. And the one in the front has more purple along with cool pink. So V01 turned out to be a color I used a lot in these pink flowers. I toned it down sometimes with an RV00 or an RV10 and tried to pink it up a little bit. But a lot of this was layering the colors to try to get them to look like what the flowers look like and to change them and adapt them without them getting electric pink. Because a lot of people I know love like the, the crazy electric pinks, but these flowers are not that. That's, that's not reality. And I like to try to push the colors by layering them into looking more realistic. And that's really what I aimed for on this is just by constantly pushing and pulling with the colors and working into specific areas to try to create shapes around each other and definitions between the petals. That was really where my emphasis was throughout the whole drawing. This, by the way, if you like it when it's all done, will be available as prints at Society6. And that will be in a link in the doobly-doo. Um, also, there are flower classes on sale all this month over on my teaching site. So if you want to learn how to color flowers either in Copic markers, there's some uh, Copic marker classes where you, you're just going to be drawing wildflowers and learning how to make wildflower shapes. But there's also some classes um, that are realistic flowers, and those come with downloadable images. So you're just coloring the images in as opposed to drawing the flowers. And then there's painting classes with flowers. There's all different kinds of florals. And since it's spring, I just put all of those into the sale category for May 2022. But if you're watching this in a time that is not May 2022, you can check the sale category anytime anyway. Now we get over to this section and down in the bottom, there are two flowers that are facing away from the viewer. And the color was a little challenge to figure out for me on this. But remember that when you do a branch like this, none of the flowers are going to be seen in their full glory. That's why I did the tiny tutorial showing you different directions to make the flowers because those bottom ones are on the other side of the branch and they're facing outward. So you need to keep that in mind when you're designing your branch full of flowers and put them in the right way. So they're facing the opposite direction. That's going to build a lot of realism. And even if you don't do it perfectly, because these are not done perfectly, but 
even if you struggle with it, just the fact that you try that is going to work toward convincing your viewer that you're believable, that your art is believable. People don't need to see everything perfect. They just need to see something that has enough of realism to it that they can kind of figure out where you're headed and they know that, that something in their mind resonates with it. So I encourage you to try designing your own branch full of flowers. You could do it with these kind of flowers. You can do it with daisies, all different kinds of things. Well, I guess daisies don't grow on a branch like this, but nonetheless, you can do bouquets. The same principle applies to any kind of bouquet as well, because those aren't all going to face the same direction. But I also figured out in this last section that I needed BV04 to add some shadows on some of these flowers. So it got a little crazy. Lots and lots more purple in here than I figured I was going to need. I thought this was going to be mostly pinks, but it still looks like pink flowers. When you look at the whole thing, you still get a very pink feel, but it just had to be achieved with different colors. And I will apologize because the last chunk of this, the camera just cut out and did not include that little piece. So there you go. All is done. And if you're interested in any of the things I mentioned, classes or artwork or Society6 or anything, links are in the doobly-doo, as well as that video, so you can make your own much easier branch of flowers. And I will see you again very soon, like, how about on Monday? Bye, guys. <laughs>